so basically in uh, last class we have completed till our uh, business scenarios what are the different kind of business scenarios are there in sap mm so today we are going to discuss on the implementation landscape or sap landscape what is the sap system structure is there how many systems are there what are the servers are there uh, so we will be discussing on that and then we will be looking into the sap organization structure what is the organization structure how you need to see like uh, what is a regular your uh, company will look like and how the company or how the structure will look like in the sap system that we are going to see then we will be looking into sap data what are the different kinds of sap data are there because in sap normally what happens we are using or we are processing the data only right so we will be looking what are the different kinds of sap data is there okay then we will be looking into what is the different kinds of roles are there in sap like end users roles are there consultant roles are there technical consultants are there so what is the difference between them what is the like work of the different different types of people who are working in sap okay then we will be looking into the type of master data so whenever we are covering the sap data then we will be see what is the master data and what are the types of master data that we use in sap mm okay so basically we will be looking into this so we have just started for that we have just started so here as all of you know like sap ecc it is called a r3 system right and right now what we are using like what is going to be used is it is a s4 system s4 system right first we are using r3 now it is used as s4 so what is the difference so normally r3 means three tier architecture okay there will be three systems are needed so first one is database where your data is uh, means it will be saved or it will be stored the data all the data will be stored in one system that is called a database system next one is your logic or background system where all the logic like whatever things you are configuring like any sap a transaction how that will happen how the report will fetch how the data will store all the things you need to write a logic right from which table which data needs to be fetched so all this thing needs to be written in a background server or logic server okay there you have to build all the logic then the third system will be application server or we call it as a gui so in this gui everyone will perform their activities like your uh, let's say in your uh, consultants they will perform some activity your front end uh, your end users they will perform some activity so these all of the things will be done in the application server so this is basically a r3 structure okay so in r3 structure we are using these things but right now in the s4 scenario in the s4 hana when s4 hana will be implemented or it will be coming live like everyone will use the s4 hana in that case one more system will be added that is a mobile apps okay mobile apps so let's take an example let's say uh, before you are using the social media kind of thing right before facebook you are using the um if anyone uh, have used like uh, before facebook there was a social site called uh, let's say yahoo messenger or there was uh, like orkut was there so it was a major um, social site at that time so on those kind of platform you are only use those kind of things in your system or in your laptop or computer you have used till laptop or computer right you are using a web based gui there you are performing like you are logging in and you are looking into your uh, like uh, stuffs and all the things you are looking over there now when the facebook came now you can log in through the gui itself right web gui is there like in the web application in the website you can directly search for facebook and you can log in and you can do your activity in mobile applications also directly you can go there and you can perform like whatever things you need to uh, uh, do a post or you need to write some comments or anything you can be able to do it from the mobile application itself right so in s4 hana also that is a added advantage so here for all like 
before what happened before you need to log into your system or you have to log into your computer and there you have to perform all the activities like you have to enter the t code and all the things you have to work like that but right now we have in s4 hana fiori apps fiori application so here what will be happening so you will be from your mobile devices also you can be able to log into the sap and there you will be having some fiori apps from the apps directly there will be like navigations will be there okay how you are going to like uh, how you are performing in your mobile there will be like whenever you are uh, going to any mobile application there are some navigation links are there or navigation buttons are there directly you are clicking on that and you are performing your transaction or you are performing your activities right so likewise in s4 hana there will be mobile apps so in that mobile apps you can be able to access your sap you can do your transaction so that is a next level or next uh, one landscape or infrastructure has been added to the existing one so that's why it is called as s4 hana okay so this is the basic difference between r3 and s4 hana okay before or right now whatever the major systems are working those are working in the r3 system but whatever is going to develop or whatever going to change in s4 hana will be the fury apps so there you will be having some flexibility of work okay right now in the uh, let's say in the covid time you have seen like um, you are not able to go to the office you are not able to work so who are like who needs to go to office like you need to work from the office itself like in the manufacturing industry or in uh, let's say product industry so you definitely need to go to the office you need to work from your workplace otherwise you will not able to perform your activities okay so that is the limitation that's why they have developed something that uh, they will be it will be easier for uh, like um, performing your activity from a next level of time okay for a next level okay so this is basically the system architecture for r3 and s4 hana okay so now let's come to whenever you are working on a support project or you are working on a implementation project so what we have or how many servers we have we have some sap server okay we are not means this is difference like this database server and all the things that is a different kind of thing but here we need to see what servers do we have access or what servers we are going to work in a sap environment when we are going for a implementation project or when we are going for a support project what are the environment that we will get to work okay so basically what will happen in sap there are oh, like uh, wait okay so what are the sap server so basically whenever you are going to work there will be first thing there will be a development server okay so in the development server what will happen like whatever things you need to configure okay you need to create a company code you need to create a plant you need to create a purchasing organization or you need to uh, like define some settings for purchase order creation you need to define some settings for the purchase acquisition creations so those kind of things you need to do it or you need to configure it in the development server so here you need to do the configuration okay so here you need to perform the configuration so once you have completed your configuration first you what you need to do first here in the development server you need to test those configuration like whatever things you have done you have to check if those are like working perfectly or working as per standard <laughs> sorry working as per standard or they are available in the system those kind of things you need to check in the development server then there will be a whenever you have done some configuration then you need to have a test server here whatever configuration you have done in the development server you need to move it to the test server 
there you have to perform all the activities let's say some integration tests are there some unit testing are there so everything you need to do it in the test server and after you are getting all the like uh, you have done the test you need to ask your user to test also once they are confirming you that uh, every testing is okay then you can move to so let's say here all the testing activity okay all the testing activity will be done in the test server so once everything tested founds okay then what will you do you need to send all those settings or all those information to the production server okay once everything is okay then it will be moved to the production server so in production server what will happen in production server you will be doing daily activities daily activities means you will create any purchase order you will create any sales order you will create any pr you will create any let's say contract or you will be doing any let's say you are uh, fetching some reports okay you are anything you are doing as a regular activity day to day activity that you need to have in the like you will be doing in the production server okay so basically here if we say okay that will be looking into the next step okay so understood this uh, like server act architecture and the sap architecture understood this point of uh, like this point you understood right okay so in your interview prospective if anyone is asking what is your sap landscape or what is your sap uh, server architecture then you need to explain these things okay so this will be like depends on your client depends on your uh, like working structure there might be two development system or two testing system might be there but as per your like as per standard there definitely needs to be these three servers needs to be there at least one one servers will be there one development one test server one production server needs to be there okay so you need to explain if anyone is asking you what is your sap landscape or whatever the sap landscape you are used in your current project or current company you need to explain them that this development server test server and production server you need to explain it in this way okay so so we have covered this uh, landscape and sap um, landscape so if anyone is having any doubt they can ask or else we can move to the next one i believe no one is having any question then we can move to the next one so next one is organization structure okay okay organization structure so in organization structure normally what happens whatever organizations we have in our normal let's say we will having a standard enterprise or we call it a company so that will be having some organization right some departments will be there some department head will be there and there will be different different like locations will be there there will be different different uh, work units will be there so all of these things are called as a organization structure okay so if we see like non sap non sap organization structure and sap organization structure okay so now let's take an example so let's say anyone is working on a company let's take an example of tata or reliance any kind of company you can take an example so first thing when you heard a name that is a company right let's say reliance or let's say tata okay so this is a company okay this company might have different different business unit let's say tata tata as a business then you have tata motors you have tata steel okay then you have let's say tata consultancy services okay this is a unit 
So let's say this is a motor unit, this is a steel unit, and this is a services unit. They are providing some services like software services or anything they are providing through the TCS. Okay, so now let's say these three are a part of Tata. Okay, so Tata is a company. Let's say these are the businesses or business unit of Tata. Okay, so let's now take an example. So Tata Motors, they are having some branches in let's say Gurgaon. Let's say some they are having in um, let's say West Bengal. Or they are having one more plant in let's say Gujarat. Right. So they will be having different different places or manufacturing unit where they are producing their materials or end product whatever we call like motor any kind of motors are getting produced so that is getting produced in different different manufacturing unit right so here let's say in gurgaon plant or in west bengal plant whenever they are producing something or they have a manufacturing unit so here they will be having some storage locations Let's say one is for raw material, one is for finished material. Just an example, okay? There might be different, different locations will be there. But let's say there will be some raw material storage location will be there. There will be some finished material storage location or warehouse, you can call it a warehouse. Warehouse or store, you can call any kind of thing, you can call it. So this is basically some manufacturing unit. Okay, so this is your company or business unit. Okay, so this is total, this is a business unit. Under this business unit, there will be some manufacturing unit. Under the manufacturing unit, there will be some storage, right? So here also you will be having some purchasing department. Let's say for West Bengal, uh, let's just scroll down. Okay, so let's for let's for West Bengal. There is a one purchasing organization or purchasing department. One purchasing department is for procuring. Let's say they are purchasing the let's say raw material. These purchasing department, they are procuring some other material, let's say any kind of uh, any kind of other material, let's say. OK, so they are purchasing these kind of documents. So normally what happens? This is a non SAP structure. What it looks like? OK, this is the business unit. This is how they are working. So let's say Tata is having three different business unit. So here Tata Motors, Tata Motors will be having like, uh, let's say four to five or as per their, like how many they need to set up their plants in different zones, they can set up their plants. So this is basically a manufacturing unit where all the business activity will be going on. Okay. Or manufacturing activity will be going on. Okay. So here, once they are doing the manufacturing activity, they will be storing the material, right? They're storing and dispatching the material then there will be some purchasing department, let's say who are responsible to procure some materials, let's say so raw material they will purchase or they will be procuring some semi finished material. Okay. Semi finished material they're going to purchase or they are procuring it. So that might be different different purchase department for that. Okay. So this is basically an organization structure how means it is a basic organization structure. If we take an example, this is a basic organization structure, what will look like in a non-SAP system, okay?